Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to learn how to interface the MFRC522 RFID reader and writer module with the ESP32 board using the Arduino IDE. RFID technology is all around us, in access cards, metro passes, hotel keys, and even attendance systems. And the MFRC522 is one of the most popular and affordable RFID modules you can use to build such systems yourself. In this tutorial, we'll not only learn how to read RFID cards, but also how to write your own data to them, just like real-world smart cards. We'll start with a quick introduction to how RFID works and understand what makes the MFRC522 so special. Then, we'll wire the RFID module to the ESP32 and set up the Arduino MFRC522 v2 library. After that, we'll go step-by-step, step, reading the raw RFID data directly from the card, extracting the unique ID UID of each card, and finally, writing and reading personal data to and from your RFID cards. By the end of this video, you'll not only know how RFID systems actually communicate with your ESP32, but you'll also have your very own RFID reader and writer setup ready for projects like door locks, attendance systems, and identity verification. So grab your ESP32, your MFRC522 module, and let's get started. Before we start wiring and coding, let's first understand what exactly the MFRC522 RFID Reader Writer is and how it works. The MFRC52 is a highly integrated RFID module that operates at 13.56 MHz based on NXP's MFRC522 chip. It's designed for contactless communication, which means it can detect and interact with RFID cards or tags simply when they come close to the reader's antenna. RFID stands for Radio Frequency Identification, and it's a technology that uses electromagnetic fields to automatically identify and exchange data between a tag and a reader. The RFID card or tag has a small chip and antenna embedded inside it. When this card is placed near the MFRC522 reader, the electromagnetic field generated by the reader powers the chip inside the card, even though the card doesn't have any battery. This allows the card to send back information such as its unique identifier, or UID, to the reader. That's why RFID cards are also called passive cards, because they don't need their own power supply. The MFRC522 module communicates with microcontrollers using the SPI protocol, which makes it super easy to connect with boards like the ESP32, Arduino Uno, or Mega. Some modules also support iQC or UART, but in this video, we'll be using SPI communication for faster data transfer. The module usually includes the RC522 IC, which handles all radio communication, a built-in PCB antenna optimized for 13.56 MHz operation, and a 3.3 volt power interface, which perfectly matches the logic level of the ESP32. The RFID cards themselves, like the Mifair Classic 1K, contain small blocks of memory that can be read from or written to. This means we can store our own data on the card, such as a person's name, an ID number, or access credentials. Each card also has a permanent unique ID, which can never be changed. In our project, we'll use both, the UID for identifying the card, and the memory blocks to write and read custom data. So, in short, the MFRC522 module is your bridge between the physical world and your microcontroller. It allows your ESP32 to detect, read, and write information to RFID cards wirelessly using radio frequency. And that's what makes it so powerful for creating projects like door access systems, attendance loggers, cashless payment prototypes, and much more. Now that you have a clear understanding of how the MFRC522 works, let's move on and see how to wire this module with the ESP32 and start reading our first RFID card. Now, let's take a closer look at how to wire the MFRC522 RFID Reader Writer module to the ESP32. We'll be using SBI communication, which requires specific pins for data exchange between the module and the microcontroller. To make it easier, here's a clear wiring table you can follow. Make sure you power the module using 3.3 volts only. The MFRC522 is not five volts tolerant and connecting it to five volts can permanently damage the chip. The IRQ pin is optional. It's mainly used in advanced interrupt-driven applications, so for this tutorial, we'll leave it unconnected. When you make these connections on a breadboard, double-check the MOSI, MIMISO, and SEK lines carefully. Mixing them up is one of the most common mistakes. Once all the connections are done, connect your ESP32 to your computer using a USB cable. Your hardware setup is now complete and ready for programming. 
All right, before we start reading and writing data from our RFID cards, we first need to install the Arduino RC5222 V2 library. This is the library that allows the ESP32 to communicate with the MFRC52 module easily. To install it, open your Arduino IDE, then go to the top menu and click on Sketch, Include Library, Manage Libraries. Alternatively, you can also click on the Library Manager icon on the left sidebar. Now in the search bar at the top, type MFRC 522v2. You'll see a result named MFRC 522v2 by GitHub Community. Simply click on Install and that's it. This library gives us all the functions we need to initialize the RFID reader, read the card's UID, access memory blocks, and even write our own data to the RFID tags. Once the installation is complete, close the library manager. You're now ready to start writing code and testing your first RFID scan with the ESP32. In the next section, we'll open a new Arduino sketch and write code to read raw RFID card data and display it on the serial monitor. Now that we've installed the library, it's time to read raw RFID card data using our ESP32 and MFRC522 module. We'll begin by writing a simple program that detects a card, reads its raw data, and displays it on the serial monitor. Let's go through the code step by step. Here, we start by including the necessary header files from the Arduino MFRC 522v2 library. The first two files, MFRC 522v2.h and MFRC 522 driver SBI.h, are required to use the MFRC 522 module with SBI communication, which is what we're using with the ESP32. There's also an optional I2C driver, but we've commented that out since we're not using I2C in this project. MFRC5222 driver pin simple .h is used to define the pin that acts as the slave select SS line for the RFID module, and MFRC522 debug .h helps us print debugging information about the card directly to the serial monitor. In this section, we define the slave select pin, which is connected to GPIO5 on the ESP32. Then, we create an SPI driver object called driver using that pin. Finally, we create an instance of the MFRC 522 class named MFRC 522, which will handle all communication with the RFID reader. If you were using I2C instead of SPI, you could simply uncomment the I2C driver line and comment out the SPI one. In the setup function, we first initialize the serial communication at a baud rate of 115,200 so that we can view all the card data in the serial monitor. The line MFRC 522.pcd init initializes the RFID reader module and prepares it to detect cards. Next, MFRC 52 debug PCD dump version to serial prints important information about the reader itself, like its firmware version and status, directly to the serial monitor. Finally, we display a simple message asking the user to scan a card. Inside the loop function, we can continuously check for a new RFID card near the reader. The first line, pick is new card present, looks for a card. If no card is found, the code simply returns and waits. If a card is detected, the next line, pick read card serial, reads the card serial data. Finally, MFRC 522 debug, pick dump to serial, prints all the raw card information to the serial monitor, including the UID, SAC, card type, and the entire data blocks stored on the card. The two second delay at the end just gives you a little pause before the next read, so the data doesn't flood the screen. Now upload the code to your ESP32. Open the serial monitor and bring your RFID card close to the MFRC 522 module. You'll see detailed information about your card, its unique ID, type, and all data sectors and blocks printed right on your screen. This means your wiring and communication are perfect and the module is fully functional. In the next part of the video, we'll learn how to extract only the card's UID, and later, we'll move on to writing and reading personal data to and from the RFID card. Once the code is uploaded successfully, open the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE and set the baud rate to 115500. Now, bring your RFID card or keychain tag close to the MFRC 522 reader module, and you'll immediately see detailed information about your card being displayed on the screen. You'll notice the card UID, the tag type, and a full breakdown of the memory blocks. In most cases, you'll see that the card type is MyFair Classic 1K, which means it has one kilobyte of memory available. Let's now understand how that memory is actually organized inside a MiFAR 1K RFID tag, because knowing this structure is essential when we later start reading and writing our own data. The total memory is divided into 16 sectors numbered from 0 to 15, 
Each sector is further divided into four blocks, block numbers 0, 1, 2, and 3. This gives us a total of 64 blocks across the entire tag. Each block can hold 16 bytes of data, so the total storage capacity is 124 bytes, or 1 kilobyte. Next, the first three blocks of every sector are data blocks. These are the blocks where you can actually store your own information, things like names, IDs, or any 16-byte data strings. But the last block in every sector, that is block number 3, 7, 11, 15, and so on, is called the sector trailer. This block is special. It contains two access keys, known as key A and key B, and access control bits that define who can read or write the data in that sector. These keys protect your stored data so that not everyone can read or modify it. A quick warning, never overwrite or edit the sector trailer blocks unless you really know what you're doing. If you accidentally modify the access keys or permissions, you could brick the sector, just making that part of your card permanently unusable. Now that we've understood how RFID memory works, let's simplify things and just read the UID of the RFID card. Let's look at the code. Here we start by including the same Arduino MFRC 522v2 library files as before. We're using the SPI driver, since our MFRC 522 module communicates with the ESP32 via SPI. The line MFRC 522 driver pin simple SS pin 5 defines GPIO 5 as our slave select pin, and then we create an SPI driver and the main MFRC 522 object to control the reader. Inside the setup function, we initialize the serial monitor at a baud rate of 15200, then call MFRC 522.pcd init to initialize the RFID reader. The next line, MFRC 522 debug, PCD dump version to serial, prints out details about the RFID module, like its version and type, just to confirm everything is connected properly. Finally, we display a short message asking the user to scan a card. In the main loop, we first check if a new card is near the reader using MFR522.pickyisNewCardPresent. If no card is detected, the code simply returns and waits. When a card is detected, the line MFR22.pickReadCardSerial reads its serial number. Then, the UID, or unique identifier, is printed on the serial monitor using MFRC 522 debug print UID. This shows the UID in a clean, formatted way. Below that, we also store the UID as a string variable by looping through each byte and converting it into a hexadecimal string. This is useful if you want to save or compare UIDs later in your code. For example, checking if a particular card belongs to an authorized user. Now upload the code to your ESP32 and open the serial monitor at 111 v 200 baud rate. Bring your RFID tag or keychain close to the MFRC 522 reader. You'll see something like this. Card UID 82729F0B. Each card or tag will have its own unique code. Try scanning a few different RFID tags and you'll see that each one prints a completely different UID. This is what allows us to uniquely identify every card or user. So that's how you can easily read the UID of any RFID card or tag using the ESP32 and the MFRC 522 module. This is a great starting point for products like tendence loggers, smart door locks, or cashless payment systems, where each user is identified by their RFID card. And that's all for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to Roboxpert for more awesome IoT and electronics tutorials every week. Thanks for watching. See you in the next project.